Hey, here, here with Gridiron Football Media Day 2024, here with Coach Bourgeois, the Pittsburgh High School. Hey, Coach, how you doing? How are we doing well, man? Just looking forward to August. We're right around the corner. There it is, man. Tell us about this summer and things y'all been doing to, to, to prepare yourselves for this upcoming season. Yeah, just like, you know, everybody else in South Louisiana, you know, you're doing your, your workouts and just trying to get acclimated to this heat. Yeah. Uh, but just keeping the guys motivated, just trying to build some team camaraderie. We've been doing some seven-on-sevens in a, in a little Baton Rouge league we got going on, but... Yeah. You know, the main thing is just trying to get guys stronger and getting them healthy because uh, a lot of our kids are still doing baseball, basketball. So you got a lot. They're being active, and that's the main thing. You know, being in a two-way school, you know, we know our kids are playing more than football. So as long as those guys are being active, uh, being around teams and just team-building activities, I mean, that's that's my main focus to uh, to get you ready for August. Good deal. Um, did, did you guys do spring this uh, spring? Well, really, you know, uh, past, I'd say, 10 years, we kind of just got the, the mentality of spring is about installing and preparing for your next year's team because every year you've got a new group of, of kids coming out there. So we don't even put a helmet on. I mean, it's all installing. It's, it's doing some testing. Our kids are playing baseball track. So, like, physically I don't think our kids are ready for football, you know, in May. So we use it as a time to install the system to get guys, uh, new guys back on, on track to get old guys healthy. Because, you know, the main thing is you got to be healthy when August starts. you got guys that play both sides of the football. So, you know, one injury for us in May is a major setback. So we kind of, you know, it's a lot of install and it's, it's, it's a lot of getting ready for seven on seven, things like that. Yeah, well, um, let's tell about some of the guys that that's going to be stepping up in new roles. I know every year around this time, you know, coaches are kind of evaluating, you know, they've lost guys, they're trying to see who that new team is. Who are, who are some of the guys that that's going to be stepping up to, into new roles and then some of the key players that'll be that'll be coming back? Right, I mean, we, you know, we're fortunate enough this year we'll have 19 seniors, and for us, that's, that's a big number. Yeah. I think my largest class ever was like 18 or okay. 17. So, it's first of all, it's a big senior class. Uh, only issue is there's only one lineman in it, so oh, you know we don't we don't have a lot of experience on both sides of the line of scrimmage. But uh, Reed Chauvin's an All District running back. He's going to return. He rushed for a thousand yards for us last year. He's returning for us. Matthew Boani, uh, he's a returning All District offensive lineman. Uh, JB Sessoms on the defensive side returns for us, and and I think that's one of our biggest strengths is our defensive side. We do return eight guys. Most of them are on the back end. Uh, our four linebackers, Chase Cresson, Will Rebus, Chase Finley, Taj Callahan, they all return. Uh, the back portion, our three guys are returning, Brody Bailey, Nathan Sanchez, and Neff Newman. So, you know, the defensive secondary linebackers, that's our strength this year. Right. But like I said, we all know that if you want to get going in the playoffs, it's going to come down to up front. And, and that's why that's our you know that's our weakness. That's the things we got to build on is is kind of get ready for up front, and that's going to be our biggest challenge. But tell us about some of the things scheme wise we'll see offensively and defensively. Well, if you know if, you know Episcopal football, you we're all about wing T. Yes, you know we like yeah. you know we we do try to get in the shotgun a little bit more to give our quarterback more of a chance to run the ball, kind of keep defenses honest a little bit, spread them out a little bit more. You know defensively, like I said on the back end, you know we like our four linebackers, so we like to keep that. Try to keep a four-man front, and uh, you know, let those linebackers do be kind of creative as we can. Either drop one of them back to a cover two look, or bring one of them off the edge. So we just try to make things up, man. We, uh, you know, being a little undersized, you got to just kind of keep other teams on their toes. And just, I think when you do things like that, also your kids are really excited about just being moving and 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 just doing th different things and scheming th and games up and things like that. Gotcha. Um, so we know it's just the new year for the cycle, for the, for the two-year cycle. Tell us about some of the um, schedule changes. Or, or You know, well, we've been playing St. Michael's week one, so right off the bat, you know, we look forward to it. We call it the Battle of the Ridge because okay. we're both right there, right next to Woodland Ridge, correct, correct. so that's a good. Uh, we added North Lake Christian this year. Uh, we're playing con uh, Traditional rival, Metairie Park out of Country Day. We've been okay. playing them for years now. Uh, then week four, we're already in the district. East Feliciana, who's a uh, big rivalry with East Feliciana. Week five is Ascension Catholic. Uh, it's been a non-district opponent for us, a good rival. We've we've always had good games with Ascension Catholic. We just brought in Lowell, Northeast. Yes, yeah, so we're looking yeah, forward yeah, to yeah. you know different types of schemes yeah, that that game. he's going to bring, young and energetic. So definitely looking forward to playing those guys. You know, and uh, you know, East uh, Northeast Baker, 
uh, capital. We're adding slaughter charter into okay. the district. They're moving up, and then we, you know, we always have our traditional rival with Dunham. Yep. So it's yep. you know a lot of the same folks, you know, but at the same time, each year is a different year because each team has a new identity. So you know we're looking forward to this year's challenge as well. So Coach Mayotte had some great seasons over the last couple of years, making you know deep runs into the playoffs. What's some of the expectations? I know you said you had 19 seniors, so you know they had a chance to you know be a part of this. Thing. Right. They well, better our better. first goal, you know, always tell our seniors we're going to be as good as this group. So you're right there to pre you put the pressure in, which they want. It's their senior year. They always want to outdo the previous year. You know, leaving your legacy. How are you going to be remembered at Episcopal? And, you know, last seven years, we've made it to the quarterfinals. Right. You know, and that's our goal. You, if you're playing over Thanksgiving, you're in your top eight right. club, and that's right. always our goal. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we haven't gotten past those, that, you know, those seven. After, after Thanksgiving, that's kind of been winning the season. So it's always get to that next spot, get to the semifinals, and then everything's wide open. But, you know, this year is no mm -hmm. different, you know. Every district, every game now, I mean, the way things with power rankings, I mean, everybody wants a district championship and things like that. You want to beat your rivals and all, but, man, there's a value on every game. Yeah. And really, I mean, you can't single out one game as being more important as, as coaches. I know our players, you know, they got asterisks by people, right. but, and that was my you know, we, you know, it's, you know, you got to take them one at a time because they each have its value if you're trying to get that higher seed. You know, and with our division, you know, some teams get biased, and that's always big at the end of the year as well. So, you know, that's some, you know, man, go, you, you shoot for Thanksgiving. If you're playing in Thanksgiving, you got a good ball club. Got some good stuff going on. Yep, so we had the circle one. I guess you already answered this. St. Michael's will be, I guess you say that's a classic game. I would no, think, big you game, know, being yeah. at Episcopal, so, yeah. Dunham's always there Dunham, and it's St. Yeah, Michael's. So, I mean, that's, we'll be you know, on that, on but you, be, be you better not take anybody else for granted. I mean, you can circle those teams all you want. You know, East Feliciana is just as important as, you know, Correct. anything. Yeah. So, um, tell, tell us about your admin, about the principal. Um, the, yeah, I mean, the, the, we – I call him principal? Well, it's actually master. a head of school headmaster, head okay, yeah. Dr. Okay. Carrie Stakely. Yeah. Uh, and she, she's she been super, I mean, uh, very supportive of athletics. You know, and, you know, at Episcopal, you know, we want the well-rounded uh, child, student. Um, you know, athletics is important, but we also – man, we got great arts. Uh, we got um, – you know, with science, math, we got new buildings being uh, built up, and right. it's just a college prep school that's going to get, you know, these kids ready for next year uh, if you're a senior. But, you know, like I said, I mean, athletically, you know, as coaches, you know, you know, we wanted to be a little bit more, but like I said, we have great admin and team. Our athletic director, Randy Richard, he played uh, Louisiana Tech. Uh, he's our, He was my offensive line coach for years. He's moved on the AD now the last few years, and just, I mean, we, we all know at South Louisiana is a certain value of football. It sets the tone for your school year, in my opinion. Yep. It just sets the tone for your athletic program. So it's really important that you get off to a great start in football. There's no doubt about it. Yep. Talk about the, 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 the community, about, you know, people that are uh, chipping in, I guess, alumni. Right. Um, I mean, and it's, it's a well, and, you know, Episcopal's fortunate enough. A lot of our graduates, I mean, we had a 100% graduation rate, 100% oh. go on to college. So, I mean, you know, once you get that Episcopal degree, you're definitely going to go places. And we get a lot of people that just expand, you know, around the globe, you know, which is great. Coach, it's 100% go to college? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's that's no messing around. Right, I mean, right, you're, right. I mean it's, it's, that's the number one reason why you're coming to Episcopal is you want that, you want that education because you're going to – I mean, you got – your goals are set, and going to college is number one. You know, and it, you know we've been fortunate the last few years to get some guys to keep playing in college. Uh, but you know, like I said, if, if you're gonna have that Episcopal degree, you know you're gonna you got an opportunity to go places. And we've been very fortunate. Uh, you got people that just network throughout the U.S. and it's yeah. it's good to hear back to some kids. And you know, like uh, you know, Nathan was get, they were, some of those guys were getting interviewed. One of the strongest attributes they like to see is former football players returning. You know, they come to the games on Friday nights. They'll come in the summer watching them work out, and it means a lot to those guys. I'll go back and say, hey, that guy played on the 2012 team, and, you know, right, just, just just networking and, thing, and things like that. Yeah, um, you're just talking about former players. I've uh, um, seen that you guys had uh, Jimmy Williams 707 we're, over there. We're dead. It's a, for, the, for the second year. Just a um, great, uh, you know, first of all, Jimmy, number one, he does, he <laughs> loved Baton Rouge. Uh, he just loved giving back to the community. Uh, you know, outstanding student athlete from Episcopal, went on to Vanderbilt, got eight years in the NFL. Fortunate to come back on my staff. He was my defensive coordinator right. for years. And, uh, you know, his, his son Ace came to Episcopal, his wife Chandra.
familiar faces. They moved on to Nashville, but just Jimmy, Jimmy was always about giving back and just networking and using football as a platform, you know, to, to go places. But he always in the back, you know, at, academics meant the world to Jimmy. Going to a place like Episcopal, going to Vanderbilt, you can just tell. Right. And then going to places like that, you know, you not only academically, but you can go and be an athlete. Yeah. And Jimmy was that person. He used his Vanderbilt degree, went on, like I said, and, and just did great things in the NFL. Actually, a funny story about Jimmy's. When he played with the 49ers, they went to play out their exhibition game in Japan. Okay. Well, Jim yeah. Jimmy spoke Japanese very fluently. Okay. Took J uh, Japanese out of Episcopal. So for the NFL, J Jimmy was actually the spokesperson. The spokesman, yeah, so right. he actually communicated with the commissioners and like he, he this Come was on. just a great guy, man. But but we're gonna try to you know keep that thing going and this year we had ten teams come back and uh you know we just wanted to keep growing but you know, Jimmy will never be forgotten. And yeah. uh, you know, we love his wife, uh, Chandra and, and son Ace and you know, we're gonna keep going with it. Definitely, man. Last question, um, I know you've been almost what year thirty this almost. Is 30. Yeah, man, I don't know if we ever see something like that again. Yeah. I know JT Curtis, he's been doing it for a long time, but man, you one of the one of the legends in the game, man. Tell me what what uh, kept you just there <coughs> and not you know, I know a lot of coaches like to kinda of move around and you know, maybe bounce up to like maybe the five eight, because we know you could probably have another challenge and stuff like that. But what kept you there and um and being able to be there and be successful all this year. You know, I'm from Donaldsonville, and my um, I commuted for 10 years to Episcopal. I was like, this is gonna be my last year. I'm not, I'm not gonna go back. Uh, I'm gonna stay in Donaldsonville. Something else local might pop up. Um, when you're year five, I became the head girls basketball coach, and I just want to get my feet wet, just become a coach, and that was one of the greatest moves I ever made because when you coach girls, you know, there's a lot. It, it just teaches you a lot about coaching. Right. You know, eye contact, the tone of voice, just the way you treat them because they're going to react a lot different than right. guys. Right. So it taught me, you know, you need to treat everybody, you know, equally. Uh, and then I got the head coaching job at, at Episcopal. But I just fell in love with the family atmosphere. I love the fact pre-K 3 yeah. through 12 is on campus. Yeah. I have three daughters, all three daughters. Two of them graduated from Episcopal. My last one's a senior this year. I just felt the family and the support. I mean, as you know, we went to the semifinals a couple times. We've been to the quarterfinal. Wins and losses are very important, no doubt about it. But I just love the family atmosphere at Episcopal, uh, and I love the way you, you, you treat your students. And I love the whole child, the picture. You know, it's not just athletics; it's academics, it's arts, yeah. you know, music, and and that just I'm I just love it. It's just, every day is a challenge. I teach pre-K PE. And I love those free key kids just as much as I love a senior. It just keeps you well rounded. Yes, indeed. Try to man. keep me young, too. Yeah, yeah, yes, indeed. Well, Coach, man, thank you for coming in. We're going to definitely follow this journey in, in year 30 over there at 80 Episcopal. And we're looking to see you guys around that Thanksgiving time and um, and beyond. Coach, man, thanks for coming in. We appreciate uh, it. Are you here with Gridiron Football? Uh, stay locked in.